Hey everybody, welcome to this stream. Uh, so today I think we're gonna be making some. We're gonna be making a uh, a book cover. Um, I was <laughs> I was uh reading this book, The Richest Man in Babylon. Um, it's basically a self help personal uh, finance type of book and I really like the stories in it but I'm not a huge fan of any of the uh, of the book covers so I thought you know what why not just kind of redo it and uh, make one so yeah uh, yeah, let's make a better one. <laughs> so, what I was thinking was that. I, there's the browser window. Uh, do it based off of the the Gates of Babylon, uh, because that's where that's where most of the stories uh, take place. So, maybe like kind of like enter into the book or enter into the world, that type of deal. Uh, so yeah, so uh, I'm doing this on a six by nine uh, sheet, um, which is the standard size uh, for um, book covers. So yeah, let's get started. Um, well, first, I think I want to do a color palette, so I'm just going to set up some, <laughs> some rectangle here. thinking about using the colors that you see in like the pictures of the gate so uh, right over here like in a blue and an orange do I always start with the color palette uh, sometimes not really um, You wait until the end and almost regret it. Yeah, I feel like if you start with a color palette, you have like an easier time just kind of adjusting things along the way if it doesn't work out. Um, but if you wait until the end, then it's you kind of did so much work, and then you might just have to start over again. So that's always a bummer. So yeah, I think I'll go for like a dark blue and like an orange, and I'll have like these. Uh, these dots running down it too. Um, since the since the cover is kind of small, since we have to keep in mind that it's a six by nine, I might just do just do one. I might just do the inside part of it, like right, like right here. This much. Instead of um, instead of the whole gate, otherwise. Uh, it might be a bit too crowded. So yeah, um, we just copy and paste this. Hold on. Yeah, the arch part, just the arch part, uh, not the towers next to it. So let me just copy and paste the picture. Huh. Looks like it's flipping. That's a problem. Uh, 
Alright. Yeah, okay. So, I need the eye drop tool. I can just... I didn't mean to do that. Alright, yeah, I think that should work for one of these. Maybe I should go for like a more orange. I like slide it. Slide it along. Yeah, I feel like that'd be good. Ooh, accidentally reversed it. Alright, and then. That's a pretty good blue. Yeah, that's pretty solid. All right. So I have I have the the jar up on another screen. Um. I I wonder if there's a way for me t so that I can have this showing off the screen. Uh, there should be. Uh, otherwise it's gonna get kinda crowded over there. Uh, you know what, let's just troubleshoot this live. Uh, Let's, let's look this up. Alright. How to make it so that, uh, I can have vectors off the page affinity designer. Oh, uh, there we go. I think this is it. I can create an artboard. All right, let's try that. Uh, oh, I don't have my snapping on either. What are the objects to the left? Uh, those are basically the tools. Um, you have like a, uh, you can put put down a rectangle, or you can you can have a pen tool, so you can manipulate it uh, using the vectors. There's also a pixel mode over here, uh, and we'll get to that uh, so we can like sketch out the ideas uh, of like having the gate and see what it looks like on page. Ooh, that's new. <laughs> I 
Not the snapping manager, there we go. Enable snapping. Cool. Yeah, there we go. Now, now we now we can make sure that things are symmetrical. Uh, okay, let me just make an art door real quick. All right, there we go. Now we can have these off of the off of the page. side. Uh, let's crop the image so that we only have the parts that we want. So I, I'm thinking about just kind of going for that or that. I think I'll just stick with this much. And then that'll be the cover and in the middle It'd be like the the title of the book and the author. I think that should look good. All right, cool. Uh, so now we're gonna go into. I'm gonna use that drawing tablet. Um, yeah. Uh, it'd be a. It'd be a nice spot for the title and the author in the middle of the, in the arch. That's exactly where I was thinking about putting it. Um, so we're gonna go into pixel persona. So this is this is good for like drawing on uh, Affinity Designer. Uh, you have like brushes. Um, if you have like a drawing tablet, you can. You can take the brushes and it'll uh, have to select the paintbrush, <laughs> um, and it'll react to how much pressure you're putting down on it. So it makes drawing and things a lot easier than they normally would be on a computer. So let's just make like a rough sketch of what what we want. Uh, I think we can worry about this symmetry later. So, and before we start, let me just name name this uh, rough sketch. All right, cool. That's a really bad arch, but it, it gets it gets gets the idea through. And when we get to actually uh, using the vectors, we can worry about making it look good. Uh, <laughs> so I'm just trying to get the shape right instead of having such a pointed entrance. We could just have a we could just have well, like an arch. <laughs> All right, so. Ooh. Yeah, I'm not used to using this drawing tablet. I have my own, but it's not a uh, it's not this kind. So my my pictures are going to look a little funky. Just don't mind me. Just drawing over here. All right. So that's like kind of a rough sketch. I feel like I should move it up a little bit, scale it up. I think I'm drawing it too far down. Um, 
<laughs> Punk can be good, yeah. Uh, let me see if I can just... Yeah, there we go, okay. If I can just move it up. Like that. So, and then we have the richest man in Babylon. Uh, you like the idea for some space, for some blue at the top. All right, yeah, I can do that. All right, yeah. I give it like give it a little space because I still I still really want the um, <laughs> how the words are there. You like it that way. Uh, you know what? Whenever we get to the vector, we can just kind of mess around with it. Um, can I trim this? No. All right, that's fine. Yeah, we'll just mess around to it when we get to using the vectors to make make the uh, title. So, down here, we have this part, and uh, we're just going to pretend that that's uh, these little things over here. So, da, da, da. and then you have, I think that's a flower in the middle. Uh, You're not an artist. Yeah, well, neither am I, but, you know, you make do. Uh, let me go to the browser here real quick. And uh, let's see if those are flowers or, like, is that just, like, a circle? I mean, it looks like... It looks like a flower, but... It, but maybe we want to, instead of like being super detailed about it, we could just um, make it like a, a bit more minimalist so that we could just have like a circle. And it might look good, it might not, we'll see. And this one, they look like flowers. All right. Yeah, that looks, that looks like a, above a flower ribbon. Okay. So yeah, there are flowers, so we might we might put the flowers over there, we might put a circle. It depends on uh what happens when we try to do it and if it's in my capabilities. So We'll just we'll just go from there. We'll just we'll just play by ear. no line over there. That's good to know. And then there's some more flowers up here. And then you have then you have the animals, alright. Uh, let's figure out what those animals are. Yeah, I probably, yeah, probably wouldn't have space for that. That's why I was suggesting, uh, one of the mush, mushushu, uh, dragons. Alright, uh, 
They're a mythological hybrid, a scaly animal with hind legs resembling a talon of an eagle, lion-like forearms, a long neck and a tail, a horn head, and a snake-like tongue. Alright, that's pretty sick. <laughs> image that they have. So I'm just going to copy that and um, bring that over to Affinity Designer. Uh, so that we could have it as a reference uh, when we go for a more detailed detailed drawing of this or we're gonna vectorize it so whenever we get that we can use that like as an overlay so it'll make it easier to work with uh, all right and an arc oh wow okay uh, is a large wild cattle that inhabited Asia Europe and North Africa cattle was important back in the day Cool. All right, so I think we have all the reference pieces ready to, to get started with the actual vector part of this. So we're going to shift from pixel over to uh, the designer persona so that we can start using uh, the vector tools. Oh, I forgot who wrote this book. Hold on, I have to, I have to credit the author here. Uh, in Babylon, George S. Clayson. All right. sketch pixel and there's the artboard all right uh, cool so we can go back to this now we can break it down and we can change the opacity of it so that we can see what's going on behind so now we have um, the, the rectangle background, the nice deep blue. Yeah, I gotta cite my sources. Um, cool, all right. So with, with vector art, you kind of want to build it out of shapes. So um, for the arches, we're just gonna use triangles not triangles, <laughs> rectangles, and um, and for the arches, uh, arches themselves, not like the pillar part. Uh, I think we could use a circle within a circle, so that we have just like a right, a nice circular part, and we can 
snap the two ends together. Uh, yeah, I think I explained that well. Uh, let me just select that so we have the right color. And right, I gotta gotta lock this uh, so that I don't. So I don't move it around, so I can actually do stuff on top of it. Alright, so it's 2.357 away, and I think I should try doing that with the same distance-ish. Okay, we'll just keep the two pillars there, uh, and we can check if it's like the right size later. Maybe I should make the pillars a little skinnier. That would look good. Uh, nope. Alright, this is both of them centered, so I think that should work. So, when I said we're going to use the circles, we just create a nice... Uh, you, can, you can create perfect circles in this program by holding down shift. If you don't, it's just going to uh, kind of come out ovally. Uh, <laughs> so you just do that and try to get it and then you can use control shift yeah I feel like the arches are going to be kind of difficult but it's okay we can make this work yeah you can control shift it to to shrink and uh, expand it from the middle of your vector um, instead of just shifting it from from this corner or the opposite corner circle from it. You can create like identical shapes um, by uh, by pressing control by selecting it and controlling it and then if you if you click on it and you take it off you, you can get uh, a separate shape and we're just gonna give it a different color like a brown so that it sticks out compared to what we want. And then I'm going to control shift, make it smaller. I feel like that's a good size for um, for the arch. If I just get this part right. Oh, I know how we can fix that. Okay. Uh, we'll, do, we'll do the circle part first. Uh, we'll take these two and we'll subtract. So now we got a hole in our arch, but that's not all that we want. We want, we want just the top part, so I can just take the rectangle, rectangle tool, and get it across like that. No, see if see what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to subtract the rectangle part from from here, 
from the circle. But if I were to do that, now that I'm looking at it, it doesn't kind of, it doesn't seamlessly uh, go up. There's, uh, it kind of looks like it like juts out like a key keyhole instead of uh, just kind of like a nice arch. Um, so maybe we'll just adjust this part slightly. Bring it in like that, and then maybe we just accidentally created an extra one. I might have just done the same thing again. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Oh, you know what? We could we could uh, instead of instead of just having it as shapes, we can um, convert it into not a text frame. There's a button for this. We can convert it into a curve. I don't know where that is though. Right now, uh, I don't want to rasterize it. If you rasterize something, that means um, you're make, you're turning it from a vector into a pixel, and uh, yeah, you don't want to do that. There we go. Okay. Oh, it automatically does it now. Huh. I haven't tried the new update, so this might be a new thing. Oh no, no, it's not. See, they can you can convert to curve. I think it was already a curve here because um, I subtracted it, so it. Why don't I want pixels? Um, you don't want pixels because then you can't uh, mess around with it. You can't uh, widen it or you can't uh, shrink it without it distorting the image. So we want a crisp finish, uh, and you won't get that with a with a pixel uh, if you if you go into a pixel persona. Okay, so then we can kind of go ahead with our, with this plane, I think. If not, we can always just kind of control the air way back. And we haven't really gotten that far where we'll mess up a lot of things. So, uh, let's just give it a try. Go subtract. sure that the bottom parts are lined up. So since this is already a curve, we can just take this and mess around with it so that it looks like it's part of the pillar. Uh, this is gonna be a bit difficult to do. Maybe I should just try moving it over a little bit so that the that there isn't such a huge discrepancy. not as good as the other side. <laughs> That's an issue. Because uh, we're trying to go for a symmetrical look.
yeah, maybe I shouldn't have moved it over. Let's, let's like revert back. Let's see if we can just, uh, maybe if I widen it, let's see if it looks odd. Yeah, that's not too bad. Uh, I don't know. If you pay attention to it, it looks kind of funky. But... I mean, not by that much. So, we can just kind of group this together. We could also uh, add these together so it becomes a shape, of, shape on its own. Um, but... If I want to manipulate uh, each shape differently, it's just better to leave it as a group and name this bottom arch. All right, cool. So now if I just want to select the bottom arch, I click that. You know, and if I want to click just an individual part of the arch, um, I can just click on the curve and the rectangles. And if it's not wide enough, we could always just widen it. So, yeah, just leave it there. Maybe I'll bring it down so that there's more room. Um, just a little bit at the top for uh, the second second arch. Speaking of which, we should probably just use um, the circles that we have now uh, to make it easier. So you just kind of do that. Control click. Um, you shift to enlarge in it, but that might not be the move here because uh, then then the lines aren't consistent, so that doesn't look very good. Let me let me move this over. Oh, all right. Hold on. Give me a, give, give me a. Give me a minute, I'll be right back.
All right, yeah, so I'm back. Uh, I just moved over from the tablet to uh, the other monitor, so I didn't have to keep looking over. It's hurting my neck. <laughs> so, let's see, what can we do about that? Just control shifting it. Yeah, I'm using the mouse again now. Um, I just, I, I've just gotten used to it, so I find that it's a lot easier. Uh, Alright, so maybe we don't want that. Maybe we don't want the same uh, arch. Instead, we kind of want it to go over a bit. So, uh, we can do the same thing that we did... Um, with with uh, the other arch uh, and just put a circle on top of a circle but this time just have it further out uh, so we can just have a is it really different from the tablet uh, yeah the the pen the pen really makes uh, things different because you kind of have to move it around. Um, I like I like the mouse for vectors because I'm lazy. I don't have to move my hand around as much. <laughs> um, but I mean, like, in in terms of like actually using it, uh, it's not too much different. But I just find it easier with the mouse. So we can just do another circle circle type deal out here um, let's see how much bigger do we want it so this is this is the inner circle so we have to make sure that there's like enough space so that this part is consistent like it is up here go a little bit smaller um, so that I can actually have like uh, like a good amount of thickness uh, to we're trying to we're trying to recreate the, the thickness here but with with this circle it might be that we should have started out with like the top, uh, the outside part, and then gone in, but uh, let, let's check it out, I guess. <laughs> it might have been better if we'd done that instead. Yeah, this looks like the same thickness, so um, we can just we can just kind of go from there. Uh, if you use shift, you can select both of them and then just subtract. So now we have a circle with a hole in it, and then we take the rectangle and we select that. So. By select, uh, when you subtract, you you take out. Um, what you're subtracting by is the top. The top shape. Um, it's like math. <laughs> you you you. This is this is. Uh, so imagine it's like five minus three. The the rectangle would be the three. And this would be the five. Uh, but if you select both of them and just subtract, now you've got a nice little arch. Yeah. 
Yeah, okay. So I think we're going to have to modify it just a little bit so that it reaches down down to here. Or maybe maybe we just do this instead. Uh, we create a rectangle. A tiny little rectangle to cover the distance so that uh, it doesn't look too bad. Yeah, all right. And we just do that on the other side too. Yeah, <laughs> order of operations, but for shapes, basically. Am I planning on making it 3D? No, I think I'm just gonna keep it uh, 2D for now. Um, trying to make it 3D adds a lot of complications with like shadows and colors. And uh, I don't know if I wanna do that right now. Uh, so we're having so much trouble with just the arch. All right, um, so yeah, there we go. Part looked a bit odd. So, oh, there we go. Just keep it like that. All right. Um, we're trying to maintain the same level of thickness uh, consistently. So, you know, I should just, what I should do is take one out. Just keep it to the side as like um, a reference. And then I can just add that together and now it's its own shape. So I don't know if you notice, but it, if you pay attention, it kind of looks like it's flaring out here. And I, so it, might be that we just have to, you know, just inch it in just a little bit so it, it, it doesn't look like it's flaring. Uh, maybe it's the outside part. The whole process is just like a little bit of messing around with um, the points trying to make sure everything looks right because sometimes things are symmetrical right the, like the program will tell you that is symmetrical but it just doesn't look all right on the eyes and uh, in cases like that it's probably just better to manually try and uh, um, try and make it look right. All right, so we got this rectangle here, so we just, we just create another one. And put that, put that into the curve. Um, not like that. Trying to get it so that, yeah, it's in the artboard, but it's not in the curve. So we can just kind of get it to work together well. I'm pressing, uh, if you press shift, it moves in 90 degree um, movements. So it, it makes things a lot easier to work with if you remember that one trick. Um, if you have like a lot of sharp corners or something and let me move this up all right yeah okay and then control click and we just move it back over
wrong one. See, like this this part, there's like a squeeze to it, and I and it it needs to be more consistent over there. So this is just kind of a thing where you just kind of have to eye it and uh, make it look right instead of worrying about like. But the computer says it's symmetric. Yeah, but you know whatever. Take that and just kind of make, try and keep the same thickness. Um, might look better asymmetric. I don't know. Let's go back. Let's let's check it out. You know what? Yeah, let's run with it. Let's just run with it. Let's see. Let's see what it looks like. Let's just make another group out of it. Um, top curve. We'll call it that. And let me take another rectangle. So I think I think uh, so that it's not too clustered together. Uh, so that there's we can still put like a a little bit of detail for the animals. We don't include this part and just kind of cut it off there instead. Right, yeah, that looks good. Uh, we'll make it so that they're the same size. Um, and we can just take that and drop that into the top curve. So now, when I click the top curve, it's, uh, it's all of this. Now we need a base. You know, it might be better if we drag the bottom part up so that we have, um, we have more room for this bottom part because I think it'll like really solidify it, um, the way that it looks. So it'll look more solid, I guess. Um, Uh, because I feel like if you just kind of have the blue expanse and the flowers, uh, it might not look as good. And see, that's the magic of vectors. It's like if you put it on, if you put it on, um, if you put it on the screen, if you put it on the page, you can still kind of mess around with it. And it's like you can easily redo um, whatever you were doing. Um, so it's not that much of a deal if you mess up. I just keep it there and uh, we'll see what it looks like when I put in the other parts. Oh. Alright, there we go. there and then put that there okay and let's see all right so what do you what do you think should I should I put flowers over here or would uh, 
Or would the bottom bottom part would would there would it look better with the bottom orange? Like that. Do you like this side or do you like this side better? I think I like the one on the left. I think I'm just gonna, just gonna try it out with the left. Yeah, the left. It definitely looks way more solid and like put together. Otherwise, it's just kind of. It kind of looks like it's a floating gate instead. Uh, <laughs> All right, cool. So now we have everything. Uh, we'll take this and we'll call it uh, bottom. Uh, step thing. Yep, that works. Uh, <laughs> it looks more like a building on the left. Yeah, that's that's kind of the image that I was going for. Um, right. So the stream's about to be over, but before I go, I think I'll put in put in some. Uh, Put in the name so we can see if it fits well in in the structure. Uh, richest, richest man in Babylon. Uh, underline right there. Okay. And you know what, let's make this the same color as the arches. And let's pick up a font. A nice looking font. Kind of like, it stands out, but it still has a, an old feeling to it. I don't know, that one looks kind of good. Maybe instead of it being center left, we wanted to be centered mid. We could also, I think, give it a black. Or no, we could give it a white since this is supposed to be um, a darker rectangle. The opacity is just down. Or you know what, you just leave it like that. That looks good too. Uh, or we could take the outside part and uh, give it like a white edge ah not really a fan of that yeah I think I'm just gonna leave it the way it was before but I definitely like the way that font's looking yeah the dark blue with the font definitely looks good I think I'm gonna keep it centered mid um, yeah there we go the richest man in Babylon, and then this is Bernard M T condensed, uh, and we'll use the same font for the uh, author George S. Clayson. Yeah, all right, that looks pretty good. Uh, I think I'll just save it here. Let's save as. Uh, save it in downloads. Uh, the richest man in 
Babylon book cover. All right. Uh, I think that's going to be... I think that's going to be it for the stream today. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, maybe I'll come back and I'll, we'll finish it. We'll put in the these animals over here on the side and put in the flowers. Uh, anyway, y'all have a good uh, rest of your day. Bye.